there's been reports of Dogman, and he was probably doing some things he really shouldn't have been in the graveyard, just some kind of sketchy type chance, and he found... Dogman, the canine cryptid we have all come to know and fear. <laughs> Everyone, welcome back to another special episode. Yes, today is going to be a very special episode with a very special guest star. Don't forget to hit that like button, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I do upload these videos very often. And also make sure to check out the merch in the description box below and all the links in the description. All that good stuff is down there in the description box. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a walk into the forest. Okay, Kenny, so you're today's special guest and um, I just want you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself and how freaking professional you are. <laughs> I appreciate you uh, bringing me on. Definitely, definitely. Um, I've been looking into the dog man for about 15, 15, 20 years, but just in the past uh, 10 years is when I've really been um, sitting down and putting it all into a uh, book form and pinging it on the Google Maps uh, with Jody Cook and the North American Dog Man Project and uh, helping them update their database. And um, about Maybe three months ago, I got an opportunity uh, from Jody Cook and Shane Michael Crisp of the North American Dogman Project to uh, come on a, a board and be a, a historian and journalist for them. So I pretty much just sat down and started putting everything that was uh, on paper form and email form and just literally strewed out everywhere, just uh, all into one area so that I can present it to people as scientifically uh, based as possible. Nice. And yeah, I, I do. I use that map all the time when I'm doing my videos. And I, I just I, I love it. It's actually it really, really comes in handy and quite scary when you see all of the dogman activity on the map. <laughs> I know, right? And the, the funniest thing is we we probably have oh, no exaggeration, maybe at least another couple hundred that aren't even pinged yet. Dang, that is crazy. Um, so, yes, we know you're from Maine. Um, and you have never had a dogman encounter. But I would like to talk about the encounter that you sent. Well, it's not really an encounter. It's an incident that happened in Georgia with the with the lady named Emily. Yeah, the werewolf girl. Yes. Yeah, so yes. <laughs> basically, she... I think she was born in 1841. Um, I think she lived to be around 70. But when she was around 20 years old, so probably around 1861, she came um, back from going to school abroad over in Europe. And when she came back, she was reported to just be super strange and uh, sickly-ish and just basically acting more like animalistic than uh, cordial and um, like a proper human would be in human eyes and she would go out at night and just disappear for uh, points in time and the farmers started reporting losing cattle and livestock and pets and things like that so they got a group of them together and they ended up seeing a strange upright black wolf-like creature one night and they unloaded on it and apparently hit it a couple times but it escaped and it was documented that her mother had to treat her for uh, bullet wounds. So uh, pretty pretty interesting stuff for sure. Apparently as she grew older, um, she kind of became more of who she was when she was younger. But yeah, no, that's a pretty interesting case for sure. Yeah, that is an interesting place and so close to where I am, Georgia. And I, for that back there, you know, for people to start acting like that back in the 1800s when everything was so prim and proper. So, and what gets me is that her mother actually healed her from a gunshot wound. <laughs> no, I mean, it's pretty, so, that's definitely pretty, pretty interesting to think potentially why she had received that wound and stuff in the first place. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I highly doubt it was being in the wrong place at the wrong time, but you just never know. What would you say would be your most frightening encounter that you've heard from someone else um i 
definitely heard some pretty pretty interesting ones, but being from Maine, um, I don't know, I'll highlight on a couple of those up here. I mean, you got the Palmyra case um, where I was able to mm-hmm. go up in Madagascar Road in Palmyra, Maine, and check out the Martin Farmhouse, which was pretty interesting. That's up near Rangeley. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's one of the more infamous cases. And then uh, just in the summer, August 23rd, you had a group of survivalists come up from Massachusetts, and um, they were like 20 miles or so in the forest near Rangeley. Mm-hmm. And uh, around 3 in the morning, one of the boys got up to, uh, he was 15, to go use the bathroom, and something hit him from the side, and he said it felt like a linebacker to clean him out, and that it smelled terrible, like a dirty dog, and uh, it was carrying him off into the forest, so he started screaming, obviously, for assistance, and the rest of the, uh, his group and leaders came out of their tents, didn't see anything, but they could hear him um, being carried uh, and something lumbering off through the forest. Uh, the next day, he was found... I believe maybe about a mile away from his original location by um, some game wardens. So that's a pretty gnarly case. And then you have another one that in August 2019, the Lisbon, Maine, near uh, the Big Dipper ice cream uh, shelf. Uh, If you go down the trail there, it's called the Old Paper Mill Trail. And it's just Mm -hmm. basically an old trail that leads to an old paper mill. But people walk on it all the time. And around 6 p.m., you had a family... A mother, a father, their St. Bernard and their 11-year-old daughter uh, walking down the trail and um, something came out of the forest that was an unknown canine that was pretty large, started trying to grab the 11-year-old girl, pull her away. Their St. Bernard didn't want anything to do uh, with the interaction as to what was occurring. The mother jumped in. The canine started attacking the mother, bit off a large portion of one of her fingers and another portion of uh, her middle finger and then the father jumped in trying to basically deter the creature and he was getting mauled as well and the animal didn't stop its attack until (laughs) you had um, another group of individuals walking down a trail and they were uh, treated for rabies and things like that at um, Lewiston, the Lewiston hospital they didn't have that but they were tested for all those things and uh, Mm -hmm. so it wasn't a rabid animal Um, it was it's definitely super strange, and the 11 year old girl has completely been traumatized about that. And then, oh, I bet, <laughs> yeah, you have another case of um, a gentleman that likes to go into graveyards and things like that because um, there's been reports of dogmen, and he mm-hmm. was probably doing some things he really shouldn't have been in the graveyard, just some kind of sketchy type chants. And he found a bunch of uh, wolf prints all around the area, so as he was just basically kind of being a buffoon. Uh, and maybe, you know, interacting with things he shouldn't. He claimed he saw a pair of uh, bright red eyes that looked like orbs in the distance, and it was an upright bipedal wolf creature, and he said he freaked out, ran back to his car, drove away. Um, and then you have another... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that one right there, that was probably a warning for him to stop whatever he was doing. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And then you have another <laughs> one that happened in, like, 1995 up in Rangeley that I covered where... Uh, a group of boys actually have gone missing. Three of them um, have never been found. Two of them were killed in front of uh, the other boys. And Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's actually one of the most uh, recent ones I ever uh, covered. And the two remaining boys, one of them killed themselves, and the other guy um, is the one that I was able to talk to about the story and stuff like that. So. Wow. That is a very unfortunate and very sad and just brutal I mean, that one with the family, I can't believe that. Like, that is, I mean, I I do believe it, but it's just like, it's hard because, I mean, it's hard to just put it away as it's nothing because this whole family fought against this creature, this dog man, dog like canine creature. Yeah, there was like five of them, yeah. (laughs) Good Lord, that is just, I don't know, but. Kenny, I mean, those were some really, really, and I'm going to throw up some of the photos, of course, that you have sent me and just the most amazing evidence, the most amazing photos, the most amazing eyewitness stories I have ever heard I appreciate you. is from Kenny. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, please, I, I would urge everyone, please go give Kenny some love on his channel. Go give the NADP some love on their channel. Kenny, thank you so much. I know we've run into a lot of technical difficulty today. And crossing my fingers, everything works this time. Um, you've been such a great guy and such a super trooper for, for doing this for me. And I really, really appreciate it, but I'm not going to hold you up any longer. I know you got some things to do today and so do I. <laughs> definitely, definitely appreciate it. Well, everyone, what did you think about those scary experiences that Kenny shared with us? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, thank you so much for all the likes and subscribes, comments. You guys really make my day. Hashtag Wolfpack. You guys are so amazing. Thank you so much for 4K. Let's continue to grow, okay? And make sure you go give Kenny some love over there on his channel, okay? And the NADP. And until the next time, guys. Bye!